And welcome back. In an election cycle that cost taxpayers $8 million, the various campaigns spent north of a combined $10 million. Could the Dems have gotten better bang for the buck? I think that we have here a person that can bring us all together. Well, that didn't happen. And with us now for a postmortem on the calculations behind the mayoral campaign strategies are political analyst John Dadian and Scott Lewis, CEO and columnist at our media partner, Voice of San Diego. Thanks for being here with us today, gentlemen. John, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on, well, we call it the disconnect among the Fletcher uh, backing uh, or those that back Fletcher and the campaign of David Alvarez. What, wasn't there enough crossover approach and appeal? Why, uh, why did the, the bulk of what could be Fletcher support go to Faulkner? Well, of course, there's n numerous reasons. But one thing that I notice is Nathan Fletcher held a press conference shortly th there after the mm -hmm. primary, Thanks. endorsed Alvarez, and then I didn't see him on the campaign. You know, for example, Faulkner very effectively used Jerry Sanders, whose poll ratings are through the roof as far as favorability. I didn't see the Fletcher really going out, being on the campaign trail, helping him with fundraising. I just didn't see that, and that maybe would have boosted Alvarez quite a bit. Was there something that alienated uh, the, the two sides on that? Was it ideological, personal? But you got a feel for, uh, for why that fell through the cracks. I don't think that David Alvarez felt like he needed Nathan Fletcher. I think that, uh, you remember, he lost his voice on Election Day. And I, I think that when he got his voice back, the first thing he did, should have done is gone to him and said, hey, like, we got to pull every stop. we got to go meet with everybody that you brought in. we got to go get everybody possible. Because you're running for mayor, you got to get everybody you can possibly get aboard. And I think Kevin Faulkner saw that. But David Alvarez spent all of December, uh, let, you know, let December go by. By the time the ballots come out, uh, you know, he starts a campaign, and the campaign was all about uh, assault weapons, uh, gender equality, minimum wage, a lot of progressive issues to get Democrats to the polls, but there wasn't a lot about uh, business, uh, you know, reaching out to business. His, ma his major reach out to business was, uh, I formed a business advisory group, but you never heard what the advice was. <laughs> Okay. Um, John, you heard the chairs of the two parties uh, uh, go through all this. What do you make of what they said there and their post-election analysis? Well, quite honestly, I do believe that the analysis of the Republican chairman was pretty accurate in the sense that you need to start off with the basics. And really what the basics were in this case is the Republican, nonpartisan, but the Republican candidate was a good candidate. He had issues that the general public resonated with. In San Diego, for a citywide race, you are not going to win citywide without getting votes from the other party, without getting votes from the independent. And that's what Kevin Faulkner was able to do. What I liked about both candidates in this race is they did not see the turf to the other person. Kevin Faulkner went south of the, uh, the eight, and actually Alvarez did try to make some inroads north of the eight. I think that's good for the citizens of San Diego. Your take? You know, Kevin Faulkner got the, the ministers in southeastern San Diego on board. And I think if we look back, that was kind of a significant moment. I didn't recognize it when, myself back how big a deal that might have been. But I think that, that you know... That was a market signal in that community. Right. And I think that, you know, um, David Alvarez, they're trying to get the Democrats out. And, and they say, well, it's a turnout. You know, this kind of election we're not, we're not very good in. But what does that mean, that you're not, you're, you can't get people to come out and weigh in for, for people that you're excited about, uh, that's, that's a significant problem. It doesn't mean uh, just something you can slough off for the next, next, it means your message isn't working with people who really care about the city. And I think that, but on, on the other hand, the Republican chairman was talking about resentment politics and, and put, pitting San Diegans against San Diegans. There was plenty of that on the right, too, where they said David Alvarez is going to take money from some neighborhoods and give it to others, and that, he, that if, you know, if you weren't part of his uh, southeastern or south neighborhoods that you were Del making, Cerro would get shorted. That you would get <laughs> shorted. And I thought that was a really negative and, and poisonous message that they, that they ran with and, and that they're going to have to live with for a while. Quick follow-up here. The, the turnout rate in the city of San Diego is roughly about 43 percent. In David Alvarez's district, the turnout was 29 percent in his council district. You've got to turn out your base to start with. Okay, got uh, under the two-minute warning here. Let's, uh, let's turn the page and, uh, and look at going forward and how the council is going to interact with the mayor-elect. Um, is it going to be kumbaya, building a consensus, or what are the realities, Scott? You know, I think there's a couple things playing. One is that the council is actually going to go left a little bit. That if, uh, if the Democrats appoint a Democrat 
to Kevin Faulkner's spot, they're going to have a super majority. And they Do you can, see that being a likely prospect, even though uh, Todd Glory kind of downplayed it uh, last I week? He, uh, yeah, I mean, everything comes down to the, the brass tacks at the, at the end. They're going to appoint a Democrat probably, and, and then they're going to have a chance to push through some progressive policies. But the business coalition in town have proven that they can throw those out, too. I think the second thing to look forward to is that Todd Glory is going to run for mayor in four years or three years. And so how are they going to, how are they going to uh, handle that dynamic? Because they're, they, they're bros, but, uh, but they're going to have some problems, too. John? Well, I certainly agree with him on the point that I think clearly they are going to put a Democrat. So it'll be about roughly about an eight, nine month that they will have a supermajority. But the key is going to be this June council elections, because out of the uh, districts that are up, there are two that are swing. And if the Democrats capture even just one of those, they keep their supermajority. And that would be tough for Mayor uh, Faulkner as a Republican mayor, because then after uh, for the regularly seated council, they will have that supermajority. Scott, last word, 25 seconds or less. Well, we're going to really see um, Kevin Faulkner. He, says he has a chance to lead, to set initiatives, to bring up innovations. Uh, does he do it or does he just manage? Thanks for this perspective. Again, John Dadian, Scott Lewis. And still ahead in the home stretch of Politically Speaking, the sounding board. Feedback on the build-up to and outcome of the San Diego mayoral race. Stay with us.